Hey everybody, this is Skater Zero here. Um, what I'm going to do is I want to cover some stuff that uh, has been released in the latest snapshot, which is the 13W01. Um, I'm not going to cover what's been added because there's plenty of videos on that already. But what I did want to do is sort of go over what you could actually use some of these things for. So what this video is going to be about is really just some of the things that you can do with these new blocks that you may have seen and gone like, what, what am I supposed to use this for? Um, you know, some of them a little bit more obvious than others. But if you haven't checked out any videos um, on what's new in the snapshot, or maybe even just go to the uh, Minecraft wiki and check out you know what's new in that um, snapshot. But that's what's coming in the, what I think is they're calling the Redstone update. So due to that, I just wanted to release a few videos on how these things work and uh, some cool things you can do with them. Uh, I don't, I'm not really that good with redstone, but like, if you play with it for a while, you start to get a hang of it. And I feel like it's something that you know, once you see somebody else doing something, that it makes it a lot easier to pick up. So, I'm gonna start with the very basic. So, um, if you don't know how redstone works, you know, just in general, like the before this update. Um, I suggest sort of, I'm, I'm sure there's tutorials out there on just basic redstone. Um, so what I'm going to be covering is the new, sort of the new feature that's being released, which is the difference between digital and analog signals. So a digital signal is, um, you know, something that doesn't just exist in Minecraft, but it's a signal that is either zero or one or high or low or on or off, something like that where it can take you know, one of two possible states. So in Minecraft, there's plenty of digital things like uh, a door is digital because it's either open or closed. Um, you know, buttons are digital. They're either being pushed or not being pushed. Uh, same thing with levers. They're either on or they're off. Um, you know, things in real life typically aren't digital because like a door in real life could be half open or half closed or you know, 90% open or 90% closed, um, you know, and anything in between. So that's what we would call analog in real life. And there's sort of a similar thing in Minecraft, which is what I'm showing here. So these blocks are all emitting, um, you know, they emit a full power signal, which is the brightest redstone dust. And normally, you know, if you played Minecraft and used redstone, you notice that the dust gets sort of dimmer as it goes along and eventually it just stops outputting so this is off that redstone dust has no power to it it would be what you call uh, low or zero in digital in the digital sense that it's off uh, this one is dim but it's on so in the digital sense it's on that's a, a one um, in the analog sense it's also a one but in the analog sense, this one is a two. And I'll explain that so that these blocks all emit a strong, very strong signal, which is the maximum value, which I'll call 15. So the analog in Minecraft is th these numbers that this redstone has a value and that value is 15. So all these blocks and you know, the lever included in this output a strength 15 signal. So analog signals now aren't just on or off, but they have a range. It's, it can be a, any range of numbers between 0 and 15. So this would be 15, and when you move you know, one distance, one block away from a 15, this block would have 14, and this one would have 13, and this is how the, uh, you know, this is how the old mechanic of redstone not being you know, able to go forever uh, worked, is that each of these values, each of these uh, redstone dust blocks has a value. So this one's 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. And you get the idea, each block you move, it decreases. So this value all the way down here is one, and this one's zero. So it's just decrease. And if I place another one, it's still zero. So it can't go lower than zero, it's just zero to 15. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, all the way up to 15. So that's what we mean by analog. So analog in real life is not quite the same as the analog in Minecraft, but I'm just going to refer to it as analog since it's pretty similar. Um, so this is one of the new blocks that you may have seen in the uh, videos or just on the Minecraft wiki. It's called the comparator. So if I click on it, you get one. It's called redstone comparator. 
uh, right clicking you'll notice changes this little um, redstone torch in there to on or off. Uh, it doesn't look like you can do anything with these two like a delay but um, maybe that's changing in future updates so I'm not sure. But um, what I've done is I've actually labeled the four possible inputs to this block uh, A, B, C, and D. So if you look from the back where A is, A is the input, you can kind of see that arrow which is the same sort of arrow in a uh, re in a repeater block. So the input, the main input is A. And then the two alternate inputs, which are optional, you don't have to have them. These can be just nothing or blocks or wh whatever. It's it's really just dependent on what you want to put on this side. You could put a repeater or just or or nothing. But what it does is when this is off, so when it's in the down and off state, what it really is doing is comparing things, which is why it's called a redstone comparator. So it's comparing A with the larger of the two values at B or C. So it's comparing using this same technique, the, the analog signal. It's not just comparing is it on or is it off, but how strong is it. So if you were comparing, say, this redstone block to this one, this one is bigger because it's closer to 15. It's you know, 15, 14, 13, 12. This one has a value of 12, and this one maybe has a value of 7. So that's how the comparator works, is whatever value that redstone block has, it compares to the value of B or C, which whichever one's bigger. So if B is bigger than C, then C doesn't, it doesn't matter what C's value is. It's going to say, is the input at A greater than or equal to the value at B? And that's basically what it does is it says is A bigger or equal to B and if it is the output D which is on the opposite side of A will have the same value as A so if A is bigger than the larger of these two B or C if it's bigger than or equal to the output D is going to be the same as A so it's just passing the signal through but if A is not greater than or equal to meaning it's less than one of these, either B or C, whichever is bigger, then the output D is going to be off. It's going to be zero. So that equivalent analog is this: these two blocks here. These both have zero value. That's off. In digital sense, it's off. So if I put a lamp, which I'll pull out here, if I put a lamp here, I get nothing. And if I put a lamp there, I get on. So this is digital, zero, one, off, on, low, high, whatever you want to use. This is analog. This is off and zero in analog. This is one. This is two. This is three. And you'll notice that all of these, even though the value is one here is not as strong as two or three or four, that in the digital world, in the digital representation, it's just they're all one. So if I, I can replace all these blocks with lamps, they all will turn on. So that's how digital and analog are related. I'll just place all these in, and you can see that digital is a 1, and analog can be any value 1 to 15, and digital 0 is the same as analog 0. So if that confuses you, chances are you probably want to stop um, you know, after this video because the uh, contraptions get a little bit more complicated and um, you know, rely on this new analog uh, usage in the comparators. So the comparators are analog inputs. The inputs can be any value 0 to 15 and it compares, does it say, or is A greater than or equal to whichever is larger B or C? If so, then A goes straight through to D. If not, then nothing happens. And then the other mode of this, this is with the redstone torch on and up, um, is a subtractor. So it's still sort of like a comparator but what comes out at the output changes so what it does is it says is a greater than or equal to the larger of the two b or c and if so instead of a going straight through the difference between a and the greater of these two comes out so if a was say 15 and c was 14 and b was 13 it would say okay well first of all this one's 13 this one's 14 so B doesn't really count. It's going to use C. And it says, is 15 greater than or equal to 14? Yes. So now instead of passing 15 through, 
it's going to take 15 and subtract 14 and give you 1. So the output would have a strength of 1, and it would look just like that redstone ore there, not like the strong one. Whereas if I turn this off, and this was 15, 14, and 13, it would say 15 is greater than 14, so make the output 15, and the output would be like this redstone ore. So that's how the comparator works. Um, and if I'm sure there's other videos that may have explained that, but uh, what I want to do is actually show some of the neat things you can do with these. Um, one of the things is sort of a fullness detector. If you connect them up to a block, like a furnace, um, chest, uh, brewing stand, I think there's some other things you can check on the wiki. Uh, but the idea is as you fill each of these blocks with more items and they become more full, the strength of this uh, comparator block that comes out is different. So what it does is, since there are no things on the side, it, the value here is pretty much just zero. So what it's saying is, take the value of how full the chest is. Is it greater than or equal to zero? Yes, it is. So make the output be whatever the value of the chest is. And the chest is maybe, I don't know, 10% full, it's not very full. So this value is two. So if this value is two, you move one block forward in redstone, that value is one. And what it does is it just shows you how many lamps are lit up, tells you the value here. So the value here being two means I have two lamps lit up and I have signs over here to help me sort of count how many lamps there are that are lit up to figure out what the value is here, which is equating to what the value of how full this chest is. Um, same thing with the brewing stand. So if you look, I'm going to try to line this up. So if I click on the brewing stand and you look at the bar here, when I take this out, the bar gets smaller. When I take this out, the bar gets smaller. And when I take this out, the bar disappears because the value of that comparator is zero. So the value of the redstone after the comparator is also zero, which means n none of these lamps were lit. Um, so now as I add more things to it, it becomes more full. And then if I say threw redstone in there, it's now 15 block strength. So this redstone dust has a value of 15, this one 14, 13, 12, all the way down to here. This one has a value of 1, and that's why the bar is completely full. So that is one of the uses. Um, this is a new block as well. You may have seen the uh, daylight sensor um, in the videos or on the wiki. Uh, what it does is it just gives you a value here, which is an analog value, depending on where the sun is. So right now, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's basically saying the sun is about 10 strong. Um, and if I set the time to something like 6,000, it should put the sun directly overhead and you'll notice that this bar is completely full now because the daylight sensor is outputting a 15 here and then if I say time set back to zero the sun's just rising it's not as strong so the bar is not as full um, and then here is one of the uses for a comparator so this little circuit here uh, is you might call it an inverter I guess uh, what it does is it takes the analog value that the daylight, or any analog value, but for here I've got it um, hooked up to a daylight sensor, and it subtracts using the, this is that subtraction feature. So what it does is this is the input A, which is the main input uh, pointing into the arrow, and what it does is it says is input A, which is a redstone torch, which has a value of 15, is 15 greater than or equal to this value. And let's just say this value was 10. So it says, is 15 greater than or equal to 10? It is. Therefore, the output should be 15 minus 10. So this value is 5. And you should see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right, so if this value is 5, that's 4, that's 3, that's 2, that's 1. And 5 of these lamps are lit. So this is a nighttime sensor. It's the opposite of the daytime sensor. And the reason I have it over here is because you can see the Daytime sensor outputs this value, which shows up as this part of the bar, and the nighttime sensor inverted that, subtracting 15 basically, and giving you the rest. So these four that are off are the same four that are on in the nighttime sensor, 
and if I switch over to full daytime, this is now full. This is a full 15. It takes 15, subtracts 15, you get zero. So the nighttime sensor is completely off because it's pretty much completely daytime. If I now go to a more nighttime, the sun is completely down, so this value is zero. 15 minus zero is 15, and this bar is completely full, meaning it's completely nighttime. So that's how that works. Um, and then here is another circuit you can use the comparators in that inverter with, which is a on-off switch. So a normal on-off switch in the digital sense is easy because you can have you know, two switches, zero or one, on or off. But uh, analog is a little bit more tricky. So this circuit is an analog on off. So this controls whether or not the circuit is on or off. Um, and then this is the input. It can be anything. I just happen to ha you know hook it up to this, um, hook it up to a daylight sensor so that the output is in fact an analog value. It's not just one or zero like a, a switch would give you. So this value is dependent on the daylight and this value here is the output so when I switch this what it does is it allows this value to come out over here so this bar is now the same as the bar over here so this bar and this bar are the same so the value here and the value here are the same but when I flip the switch back to the off position this turns off, the bar just turned off. So I have control over whether or not the analog signal here makes it over here. And um, you know, I'm just gonna pause here so if you wanna take a look at the circuit, it's pretty simple. Um, but I'm gonna explain this in a future video, so I'm not gonna bother going over it. If you just wanna you know, reconstruct this for yourself, this is how it looks. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to bother explaining it now because I'm going to make another video for that. So that's another thing you can do with these comparators is have analog switches that, you know, if you only want that analog value to be sent through, you know, given maybe somebody stood on a pressure plate or, you know, whatever signal you get in here, this is a digital on-off kind of signal that controls whether or not the analog signal goes through. Um, so some cool things you can do with analog stuff in these comparators. This is a analog uh, analog state change detector. Uh, that's just what I call it. It doesn't have to be that, but uh, what it does is it detects changes in an analog value. So this is the input block, and whatever value this has, if it gets bigger, this will turn on and just flash. If it gets smaller, this one will turn on and flash. And I have all these um, hooked up so that I can control what analog value comes in here. So what I could do is actually put this uh, daylight sensor on top, which is powering that block below. And as the sun rises, that value is going to get larger, the value of the, uh, the block right below the, the daylight detector. And once it gets bigger, you'll see it should be hopefully soon that uh, the lamp that says got bigger on it will flash. There you go. So that was it saying this value just got bigger because the sun is getting higher in the sky. And if I then set the time to something a little bit more near night, the sun is setting, that value is getting smaller, and you should see the got smaller lamp flicker. So there, it just got a little bit smaller, and you'll notice that the value is 1 because this one's off. Once the sun completely sets, that will turn off completely, and the got smaller lamp will flash one more time. And then the, uh, the value will be off till next, you know, the sun rises again in the morning. So now, there you go. So that is how that works. Um, you can also use these, so I'm going to set the time back today. You can use these to set manually, so that gives a value 15 here, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. So 10 is now there. If I flip 14 on, it should get bigger, so you should watch the uh, the bigger one. It flashes. 
If I then turn the 14 off, this will become 10 again, and it says get smaller. And then if I turn the 10 off, it goes back to zero, and that means it got smaller. Um, again, I'm not going to explain how this works yet because I'm going to do this in another video, so um, I'm going to hopefully have links for all those once they're up. Um, I'm just going to keep moving on. So here is another thing you can do is a basic brewing indicator. Uh, the way it works is using the comparator to check how full the brewing stand is. So the brewing stand here is connected to the circuit through the wall, and you know if you built this in your house or whatever, you wouldn't even you could just basically hide that behind somewhere. But what you do is when you stick all these things in the circuit detects that the brewing stand was filled and then once the nether wart is all done, you know, once this is all done brewing, the nether wart disappears and I'm going to be quiet for a second here. And it plays those little notes once it's all done. So what happened was the uh, nether wart disappeared, it became less full and it struck it back here, detected that, and played some notes. So if you're, say, you know, out and doing some crafting over in your house, and you just threw some uh, nether wart in there, and you wanted to know when your brewing was done, you could, um, you know, hear the little notes. Same thing if you throw in the gas tier, and now you're finishing off your potions. You go off over, do whatever else you're doing. Um, you know, maybe doing some crafting or whatever. Instead of having to come back and keep checking on it, you can just kind of hang out to hear the notes. And you, okay, all done. Grab your stuff, and uh, that's just sort of an audible thing. Now, let's say you walked away and you weren't going to hear the notes. This is a uh, advanced brewing detector, which I'll show you how that works. It um, does. Sort of the same. It's the same idea that you're detecting when the chest becomes filled or emptied. But uh, when this finishes, instead of playing notes, what it's going to do is turn on this lamp. So let's say I went, you know, and did something really far away where I wasn't going to be able to hear that, uh, hear those note blocks, or it was loud wherever I was. Then, uh, you know, I come back, and the lamp's on, indicating that my potions have been finished. So now here, when I throw the gas tier in, I have to hit the manual reset button to turn the lamp off so that it will you know, alert me the next time I come back. So let's say now I came over here and I wanted to finish off some brewing or you know, do some crafting or just whatever, go check on like say a mob farm or something like that, that you didn't have to worry about hanging around close enough to actually hear the notes. When it's all done, you look over and say, oh, okay, the lamp's on. That means my potions are done. Come back, grab the potions, and it detected that the brewing stand was emptied when I took out all the potions and turned off the light automatically. So you don't actually have to use the manual reset when you empty the stand. You just have to do it in between um, multi-stage brewing. So that's uh, some cool things you can do with that. I'm gonna go over these circuits again in the more advanced uh, videos, but just to see what you can do. Um, Here's some things you can do with the uh, new solar detector, the daylight sensor. Uh, these are edge detectors. So what it does is, I'm going to destroy this so that I can show you with the, the lever instead of setting the time. But all it does is sends a pulse to that output there. That piece of redstone is connected to a door just so you can see it. This is the input. So when it changes, it sends a pulse to the output. So you notice I flipped the switch, it changed this input and sent a pulse to the output so it opened and closed the door very briefly. And then if I switch it again, it sends a pulse. And that would be, you know, obviously not very useful for a door, but um, there's an example over here where when the light sensor switches from daylight to night or nighttime to day, it sends a pulse to a, uh, a powered rail, which is uh, holding the minecart, so when it becomes nighttime, a pulse gets sent and the cart gets sent off. Um, I'll show you that a little bit later. Uh, this is another circuit you can use. The, it's a rising edge detector, which um, I'm going to delete this so that you can show with the lever, but when the input here switches from low to high, which is a rising edge, 
you get the pulse at the output. And when it switches from high to low, nothing happens. Only when you switch from low to high. So this is a digital circuit, as is this. Um, and you can you know, throw a, uh, a sensor on top. It doesn't have to be a... Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be a, a lever, but I'll show you the lever. So this is a falling edge detector. Works very similar to the uh, rising edge, just it's different in the sense that it's falling edges. So a falling edge is when it goes from high, which is the input now, to low. You get the pulse at the output. So nothing happens when you switch to high, but something does happen when you switch to low. And likewise, you can use this uh, with the daylight sensor to uh, detect, you know, a falling edge is basically when the daylight sensor goes from being high during the day to low at night. So when the sun sets, this would give you a pulse. The rising edge detector is the same. It just on the opposite end. When the sun rises, you would get a uh, a pulse at the door. So the example I have for that is this is just a little toy example. So it's um, kind of just messy and everything, but. The idea is that if this was your mine and that was your base, these would obviously be a lot farther apart, but just for demonstration purposes, if this was your mine and you had you know, maybe a chest here, and instead of having to store everything in your chest and then grab everything in your chest and run up to your base, what you could do is, say you just had a whole bunch of stone that you'd mined, and you throw all that stone, I think it's control Q if you didn't know, that will send a whole stack. So I just threw a whole stack onto the new item, which is the item hopper, uh, which is a work in progress, but should be added. And the item hopper, I think just ate all my things. So this is still a work in progress block, but the idea is when you throw things onto it, it should take them. And I'm gonna try the whole stack again and see what happens, but it should take them and put them into this minecart, which it did. Okay, so. I'm not sure, the control clicking thing didn't seem to, maybe just doesn't work, maybe you have to actually do this and throw the whole stack just by dragging it out, I'm not sure, it looks like it may have taken that, yeah, that, oh wow. So yeah, there's, this is still a work in progress, but the idea is that you throw things into it and it will feed them into, uh, you know, chests or mine carts and it's just loading it up and then uh, the idea is using those detectors when it becomes nighttime. So if I set it to just about nighttime, the sun is setting. This is the detector that's going to go off. And it sends a pulse to the uh, powered rail, which shoots that cart off. And that cart then ends up at your base, where it's sitting on top of a hopper. And the hopper is pulling things out of that cart now. So you can see the stuff coming out of the cart, going through the hopper, and into this chest where it's storing anything that you threw into the hopper over there, ends up in this chest, and you don't have to you know, hit any buttons or anything, it's just controlled by the daylight. So now when I set the time to almost daylight, it sends a pulse off, it shoots the uh, that cart that was previously up there back down to your mine shaft where it will continue to get filled with anything that you may have thrown in the hopper which is holding some stuff so now it's just refilling this cart which I can't click there we go so it's refilling the mine cart and then the next day pr uh, presumably this would have you know I'm setting the time so it's not it doesn't have enough time to take the you know all these items out of the hopper and stick it into the uh, mine cart but the idea is that by doing it every morning and every night that this cart should be you know, completely loaded up and this cart could, should be completely unloaded by the time they get sent back to the other side. So um, that's one use for that circuit that you can make a uh, basically a day-night swapper and then the in-between stuff doesn't really matter as long as you have sort of a circuit where when this cart comes out it goes on this track and when that cart comes out, it comes on the other side so that they don't collide, you know, midway through. And you could just make this go on for as far as you need it to. Um, so yeah, and then all this other stuff is just sort of playing around with uh, using that same track. So you didn't have to actually lay down multiple sets of tracks. So I could actually hop in this cart, hit the button, 
and ride the same tracks that the uh, the storage mine carts were using. But because of the tripwire, I trip it off instead of going there because the tripwire turned me this way. I end up at maybe this would be like a station. So um, you know, I go down to my mine when I'm ready to go back up to the base. Click the button and we head off and we end up back at the uh, the base station. So that's a uh, just a basic little toy that I made for uh, demonstrating some cool things you can do with these new blocks. Um, some other cool things you can do, uh, day counter. So this chest has five gravel in it, which means five days have elapsed since I built this. And it's just a dispenser loaded up with anything that you want. Gravel is just what I chose since, I don't know, if that's sort of a junk block that you have lying around, you wouldn't mind just storing them in a dispenser but it works based on the um, the daylight sensor so if I set the time to night the daylight sensor goes off so now that you know the sun is set the moon is rising and then if I set it closer to daylight this will turn on and shoot a block out so there it goes shot a gravel block out it lands in the hopper goes into the chest and inside the chest I now have six gravel blocks which means uh, six sunrises have passed or six days have passed since I built this machine so that's just kind of a cool little thing that you can build um, here's another thing that you've probably seen and I think it was in uh, Captain Sparkle's videos or somebody else may have had it too but it's just the eternal daylight machine using a command block that sets the time back to zero and then it uses a daylight sensor at a distance away to trigger the command block. So when I flip this switch, it's set the time to zero because this powered the block. And uh, well, actually, I have to show you. So if I set the time to nighttime, very quickly you'll notice that turns off, which turned the redstone torch on, which powered that, which then set the time back to zero. Now this is powered, the redstone torch is off. And then when the sun gets low enough, this will become unpowered, the torch will turn on, set the time back to zero, so you never actually have uh, night time, which is nice. And then this little switch just allows you to turn the machine on and off, so now I can set the time back to night. This switch is forcing that to stay off, even though this would normally allow that to come on, so it allows me to have night time. Um, that's just a little cool thing you can do. And then um, the last thing that you can do, and this is a lot more advanced, I haven't figured out exactly what you would do with even this set of circuit, but you can make uh, converters to go from the analog signals to digital signals. So the analog signal is this input here, and depending on its value, you get a bunch of zeros and ones, which I represent with lamps being on or off, that represent that same value. So I'm going to do an example. So the example I'm going to do is the number three. So this is one, two, three. That has a value of 15, and if you count all the way down to here, that's going to have a value of three. And then this is the output in digital. So zero is because the lamp's off. That's digital zero. Digital zero. This is on, so that's a one, and that's a one. And the way it works is you just say zero, which is the value of the digital. This is a bit. What you call a bit is zero times eight is zero. Add to that 0 times 4, which is still 0. 1 times 2, which is 2, plus 1 times 1 is 3. So that gives you the value 3. When I flip that switch, it made this redstone value have a value of 3, which now is represented as a digital number using 4 bits. So that's why it's called a 4-bit analog to digital converter. That's ADC. Um, if I say switch this over to 10, now that gives this redstone dust a value of 10. That's made with a 1 times 8, so that's 8, plus 0 times 4, that's still 8, plus 1 times 2 is 10, plus 0 times 1 is still 10. So that gives me a value of 10. Uh, and then if I say switch 15, you get 1, 1, 1, 1, because you have to do 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 to get 15. So that's an ADC. I haven't quite figured out exactly what you would use that for. Um, you know, this uses all the comparators and everything, but I don't know what you would use this for. The only thing I can think of is sending a analog signal, like a, a value of 10, is 
over long distance would be difficult because the second you go one block farther away, it becomes a nine. And then, you know, each block you go farther away, it becomes weaker and weaker. So you couldn't really send it long distances without using these um, comparator blocks and just chaining them all together. Which, if you're actually playing in survival, could be, you know, resource intensive. Maybe this would be a lot easier because you can just send a digital one or zero. These are, these lines here are all digital, which means that when the lamp is supposed to be on, this all this redstone's lit up has different values, but uh, you can just every 15 blocks throw a repeater in, and the value continues to be either on or off. So that's a uh, one thing I can think of. Um, I don't know what else you might actually use that for. Uh, the other thing you can use these comparators for is the opposite, which is a digital to analog converter. And actually, I'll just show you the 4-bit one. I'll go over how these actually work in a separate video, which is why I have the 2-bit. It's a lot easier to explain. Um, but the way this works is you have the same input, I mean the same sort of idea that you've got digital inputs instead of outputs being lamps. This is an input where I can change the input to be either 0, which is the switch off, or 1, which is the switch on. So as I flip these switches, I can change each value, the bit. So this bit is a 0, this is a 0, this is a 0, this is a 0. And that binary number, which is how you represent the, you know, the sum, so this is 0 times 8, plus 0 times 4, plus 0 times 2, plus 0 times 1, which is 0. The output, which is this block, well, that block as well, but this block is 0. It's off which means you know you don't have any signal. If I flip this switch on, this block now has a value of 1, which is shown by, this is that same sort of uh, bar graph I was using earlier, so this redstone block has a value of 1, so it lights up one, uh, one lamp. If I then switch on 2, I get a value of 2 here. If I add, so now this is 0 times 8, 0 times 4, is still 0, plus 1 times 2, plus 1 times 1 is 3. So this now has a value of 3, and that's shown by this uh, redstone lamp. And likewise, I can turn them all on, which is the number 1111 1, 1, 1 in binary, which is 15, we know, and uh, when I did the example over there, it's 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. So this has a value of 15, which means that the bar should be completely full. It goes all the way up to 15. So that's a digital to analog converter, um, and I'll explain how that works in a future video. But um, yeah, likewise, I don't really know what you would use a either of these for. You know, maybe, like I said, if you wanted to send signals long distance, like if this signal over here, you know, was from a that this value here came from a light sensor way, way up on the surface or something, and I didn't want to have to actually use all these comparators to send the values of say 10 which is how bright it is outside all the way down into the you know mines I could build one of these have it uh, convert to digital signals which are easily you can see I, I've transferred them a long lot longer distance I could run those wires all the way down and instead of using levers connect them up here and get this value to be the same exact value as whatever was being measured all the way over there. So that's one possible thing that you could use it for. Um, that's about it for the uh, sort of toys that I can think of that you'd be able to do. You know, I'm pretty sure there's tons of other things you can do with these, you know, fullness detectors and, you know, maybe you could detect whether or not chests got more full or less full um, using this more or less full analog state change detector. Um, you know, there's so many different things you can do. Um, I'm going to explain how all these little gadgets work in future videos. I'll break those up into smaller chunks so that if you're interested, you can just search for those. Um, yeah, I probably won't go over this because this was just like a, a little toy uh, just to show you know what you can do with some of these things. So actually, there you go. The uh, sun just rose. You can see those things switched off, and now the mine carts are swapping places. But um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. If you did, uh, please like it so other people can see. Um, you know, I want the um, redstone update to be a good one. I, I don't, I don't necessarily feel like uh, you know redstone's a lot of people's forte. But um, 
it's definitely interesting and uh you know the more you see the more you can figure out and the more you can uh you know figure out what to do with it and even just copying and pasting circuits is uh is a pretty easy way to get some cool stuff in your uh, Minecraft world. So if you do like it, just uh, give it a thumbs up, and uh, I'll see you later.